each element so each element has a different atomic number which is the number of protons. So the number of protons in the nucleus. Oh, black. And the number of electrons. number of electrons in the neutral atom. It's basically the elements ID. All right. So if we go to a periodic table here, here's that dynamic periodic table. Oh. So Right there, they're usually up top. It can be where hydrogen is, number one. Or it could be in the middle of the box. Right up top, these are the numbers. Their whole number is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and so on. You see the numbers, they go left to right in numerical order, top down. Those are the atomic numbers, and that's the number of protons. So these elements are arranged as increasing number of protons. Okay. Also, right, in this table, there's something below it. These numbers down here, and those are the mass numbers. So, but however, different atoms of the same element may have that's a horrible item, different mass numbers. Oh, it didn't change. And the mass number is the number of protons and neutrons in the nucleus. All right, so the number of protons and neutrons in the nucleus. So let's look at an example of hydrogen. Three isotopes. Three isotopes, all right? So an isotope is an element, like a hydrogen here. There's three different isotopes. They all have one proton, all right? But they have different um, mass numbers. So you have H, H, or D, H, or T. So what are their names? We have hydrogen. deuterium and tritium all right they all have one proton one proton one proton and one proton however right however we have zero neutrons one neutron, which is why there's a mass of two, and two neutrons. And of course, they all have neutral items have one electron. So those are the three different isotopes of hydrogen. So the atomic number, right, 
not, not, not purple, blue, blue. Atomic number is one. However, the mass number is one, is two, is three, right? Because what has mass? The protons and the neutrons. All right. And so when we talk about writing this out, right, we will see, let's go to draw here, draw, you know, element H here, a little box, I have H, one, 1.008, all right, and so when we write this out, Okay, I have hydrogen. The number of protons goes right there, right? One, which would be the uh, atomic number. All right, so atomic number on the bottom, which a lot of times you'll see it as Z. The element goes here, and then the mass the mass number, which they use A for, goes up top. Alright. And so the mass number, the atomic number, and by the way, the charge tends to go over here. And the charge is protons minus electrons. So protons minus the electrons. Right, so we have, if we look at this, then the mass numbers, I'll use green, it'd be one, two, and three. All right, one, two, and three. Now, this leads us to the fact that, well, what's the average mass of the three isotopes of hydrogen? Well, I have one, a two, and a three. So one plus two is three, plus three is six, divided by three would be two. The average would be two. However, my atomic mass is right there, and that is 1.008. That's pretty close to one and not two. And the atomic mass is a weighted average of all the naturally occurring isotopes right of an element so we obviously can't weigh every hydrogen on the planet that'd be insane right because we, we didn't empty the oceans to do this and there's a lot of hydrogen in the oceans a lot of oxygen in the oceans right can't do that we didn't actually physically weigh everyone so we have a weighted average we know the relative percent abundance of each atom in samples, right? And we actually do a lot of counting by weighting, weighing. And so we do a weighted average, okay? So let's look at two. Let's look at argon and, and potassium. Argon and potassium. So first, argon. Argon, we have three isotopes. We have 36 argon. 38 and 40 and 40 All right so we have three isotopes now that's the mass number the number of protons argon has is 18 so that doesn't change right 18 18 18 but the mass changes right so we have 18 neutrons 20 neutrons and 22 neutrons on degrees. It's how about let's go with neutrons. All right. Now we know that 0.34 percent of argon is argon 36. We know 0.06 percent of argon is argon 38, and 99.6 percent 
is argon 40. And so the average mass of argon happens to be 39.948 atomic mass units. That's a unit, AMU, atomic mass units. All right, which makes sense that it's really close to 40. Potassium is, we got three isotopes of potassium. We got 39K, 40K, and 41K. Now, each potassium, right, has 19 protons. 19, 19, and 19. But there's three isotopes. And we got 93 0.22% of all potassium is 39. There is 0.012% that are 40 and 0 or sorry 6.77% that are 41. So overall, right, we know it's 39.102 AMU, which is closest to 39 because that's where the most abundant one is. That kind of makes sense, right? Now, what's not on there is we need to know the precise mass of the isotopes to calculate the atomic mass. All right, so example, neon. So neon has three isotopes. We have uh, 20 neon, 21 neon, and 22 neon, All right? So the mass of 20 neon happens to be 19.9924 atomic mass units. For 21, it has to be 20.9938. And for 22, it's 21.9914. We also need to know the percentages. 90.48%, 0.27%, and 9.24%. 5%. That's their abundances, which have to add up to 100%, right? We have 100% abundance. All right. So, what's the approximate mass? Well, it's mostly, it's closer to 20. So, around 20 is what we would expect. Now, we kind of know the answer. It's, you know, 20.18. But it's kind of by 20. All right, so how do we do this? The weighted average. Because we don't just add them up, divide by three. What we do is you take the mass times percent, mass times percent, mass times percent, and you add those up. But you gotta get, remove the percent sign. So this becomes 0 0.9048, right? This becomes 0 0.0027 and 0.0925, right? That's their numbers without the percent sign. You got to divide by 100 there. So mass times percent. So neon itself will equal the mass times its percent times mass times percent, right? So 19.9924 AMU multiplied by 0 0.9048 plus we have 20.9938 AMU multiplied by uh, 0 0.0027 plus 
0.9914 AMU multiplied by um, 0 0.925. So neon ends up being, what if we do that? So we take that and those numbers, the 19.9924, 9924, multiplied by 0.9048 and add it to 20.9938, multiplied by 0 0.0027 plus 21.9914. Times 0 0.0925, and I get 21.1800. 20. And there you go. And there's the mass. Now, on a problem, on a test or something, I'm not going to ask you what's the molar, what the atomic mass is of neon, because you can look at the periodic table and get it. Alright, it's going to be, right, the, remember, these add up to, they can be two isotopes, three isotopes, four isotopes, they could add up to 100%, and you got to do mass times percent. So I'm going to have to, you have to figure out like one of these, or it'll be a made up element, or something like that. Alright, now there are some elements that only have one naturally occurring isotope, like fluorine does. And nowadays, if you go to an older periodic table, some of them, uh, they have a lot of decimals. They usually have one isotope. I had a list someplace in my office where all they all were. I don't remember what they all were, but that's what we got. We got some elements have one, some have two, some three, some four, some five, and that's just how it goes. Last topic of the day would be ions. And so this is when atoms gain or lose electrons right we cannot gain protons if I gain protons I'm a new element so if I'm carbon I gain a proton I'm now nitrogen I go from six protons to seven protons that's not what we're talking about that's nuclear chemistry however if I'm fluorine with nine protons and nine electrons I can gain an electron and have 10 electrons and 9 protons, I would gain a negative particle, so I'm minus. All right, so let's do examples here. We have sodium Na. All right, if sodium loses an electron, I get Na plus plus an electron. So we have sodium metal. And sodium would have 11 protons and 11 electrons. Then I have sodium, I'm sorry, my NA, sodium ion. Also, we have chlorine, oh, let's not use green, let's use black again, Cl plus an electron, gaining an electron going to Cl minus. I have chlorine. Or chlorine, yeah, chlorine going to chloride. Very important, we get the IDE in there. Ion. All right, the names change. So now spelling again does come into play. So you're going to have to make sure, like, we're going to learn these endings really matter. Right? Really matter. Uh, the ides, the ites, the eights, the polyatomic ions, you might have already noticed. The polyatomic ions, they have ites and eights. Those are important. So th those are the important parts. So chlorine, chloride, totally different. You don't want sodium and chlorine on your french fries. It'd be very bad and explode. Sodium chloride, people like that on the french fries. So it makes a difference. And the sodium doesn't change much. It's the non-metal that really tells us the story.